What if I told you that clover and grass could fatten cattle faster than grain supplements? Sounds impossible, right? Two weeks ago, I visited a pasture-based operation finishing steers on nothing but a specific clover-grass ratio. And these animals were gaining 2.8 pounds daily with zero grain input. Zero. I walked those fields trying to figure out what made this forage combination so effective at building muscle and fat. And what I discovered about protein cycling and natural sugars completely changed how I think about cattle nutrition. The secret is in the timing and the ratio. And there's one specific clover variety that outperforms everything else during the final 60 days of fattening. When you see which one it is and why it works, let me take you back to that pasture, because what I'm about to share will challenge everything you thought you knew about finishing cattle naturally. The rancher, a third-generation producer, showed me his weight records from the past 18 months, and the difference between his old program and this clover grass system was shocking. Before implementing this combination, his steers averaged 1.4 pounds daily on straight grass pasture. After switching to the strategic clover integration, that number nearly doubled. But here's what's even more interesting. The quality grade improved too. More marbling, better finish, and buyers were paying a premium because the meat had that grass-fed flavor profile without the typical leanness problem. So what makes clover so special in this equation? It comes down to three biological factors that work together like a perfectly designed machine. First, protein content. White clover and red clover both contain between 18 and 25% crude protein depending on maturity, which is significantly higher than most grasses sitting at 10 to 15%. But protein alone doesn't tell the whole story, and this is where most ranchers get it wrong. They think more protein always equals faster gain, but that's not how ruminant nutrition works. The second factor is digestibility. Clover has a lower fiber content and breaks down faster in the rumen, which means cattle can consume more dry matter per day without gut fill limiting their intake. And the third factor, the one almost nobody talks about, is the natural sugar content. Here's where it gets fascinating. Clover contains water-soluble carbohydrates, basically natural sugars, that provide quick energy for rumen microbes. When these microbes get both high protein from clover and the moderate energy from grass, they multiply rapidly and produce more microbial protein, which is what actually gets absorbed in the small intestine and builds muscle tissue. This is protein cycling at its finest, and it happens automatically when you get the ratio right. But what is the right ratio? Hold that thought, because the answer depends on one critical variable that changes everything. The variety of clover you choose determines your success or failure with this system. Most producers default to white clover because it's cheap, aggressive, and persistent. White clover works well for maintenance and moderate growth, giving you that consistent 18 to 20% protein. But during the finishing phase, the last 60 to 90 days before you want to sell, white clover isn't your best option. The real champion for natural fattening is red clover, specifically the medium or mammoth varieties. And here's why this matters more than you think. Red clover contains higher levels of phytoestrogens, particularly an isoflavone called formanonitin. Now, before you worry about hormones, understand that these plant compounds actually promote fat deposition and marbling in a completely natural way. Multiple university trials have shown that cattle finished on red clover dominant pastures produce beef with 30 to 40% more intramuscular fat compared to straight grass or white clover systems. That's the difference between select grade and choice grade at the sale barn. That's real money in your pocket. But you can't just plant red clover everywhere and expect magic to happen because too much of it creates a different problem that can cost you serious gains. The ratio is everything. During the growing phase, from weaning up to the final 90 days, you want a pasture mix that's approximately 20 to 30% clover and 70 to 80% grass. This combination provides steady growth without excess protein that just gets wasted through urine. Your grasses, whether it's orchard grass, tall fescue without endophyte, or perennial ryegrass, provide the fiber structure and moderate energy that keeps rumens healthy and prevents bloat. 
But when you enter that finishing window, the final 60 to 90 days, this is when you strategically shift cattle to paddocks with 40 to 50% red clover. This higher clover ratio increases energy density and protein quality exactly when animals are physiologically primed to deposit intramuscular fat. And right here is where 90% of ranchers make their biggest mistake. Do you know what it is? They try to finish cattle on red clover pasture in early spring or late fall when the plant is in vegetative growth, super high in protein, over 30% sometimes, but low in those water-soluble carbohydrates. The result? Cattle consume excess protein they can't use efficiently, pee out expensive nitrogen, and don't gain as well as they should. The secret timing that this rancher showed me was finishing during late spring through midsummer, when red clover is transitioning from vegetative to early bloom stage. At this maturity, the protein moderates to around 22 to 25 percent, but the sugar content peaks, giving you that perfect protein to energy ratio that drives both muscle growth and fat deposition simultaneously. Let me give you the practical management sequence that's working on operations across three different states I've consulted with. Starting 90 days before your target finish date, transition your finishing group into paddocks that contain that 40 to 50% red clover mixed with complementary grasses. Use rotational grazing with moves every three to five days to keep cattle on fresh, high-quality forage. This frequent rotation does two things. It maintains forage quality at peak digestibility, and it stimulates appetite because cattle always have something new and palatable to eat. During this 90-day window, you should be seeing average daily gains between 2.5 and 3 pounds if your forage quality and stocking rate are dialed in correctly. Now, bloat management. I know what you're thinking. High clover percentage means bloat risk, and you're absolutely right to be concerned. But there are three proven strategies that virtually eliminate this risk without drugs or expensive interventions. Strategy 1. Never turn hungry cattle onto lush clover pasture. Always make sure animals have consumed dry hay or mature grass before giving access to high clover paddocks, especially in early morning when plant sugars are lowest and moisture content is highest. Strategy 2. Maintain that grass component in the mix. Pure clover stands are dangerous, but a 40 to 50% mix with fibrous grasses provides enough structure to slow down consumption and reduce foam formation in the rumen. Strategy 3. Use paloxylene blocks or free choice options during high risk periods if you want extra insurance. But honestly, with proper management and mixed pastures, bloat incidence drops to nearly zero. Here's something else that surprised me about this system. Parasite pressure actually decreased on these clover grass finishing pastures. Why? Red clover contains condensed tannins, natural plant compounds that have anti-parasitic properties. Research from New Zealand and the UK has demonstrated that cattle grazing tannin-containing forages like red clover show lower fecal egg counts and reduced barber pole worm loads compared to those on straight grass. This means healthier cattle, better immunity, less money spent on dewormers, and more efficient feed conversion because parasites aren't stealing nutrients. It's a compound benefit that most ranchers never even consider when they're planning their forage program. But what if you're working with existing pastures that don't have the right clover ratio? Can you retrofit your operation to implement this system? Absolutely! The fastest method is frost seeding red clover into existing grass stands in late winter. Red clover seed needs cold stratification and soil to seed contact. So broadcasting in February or early March, depending on your region, lets natural freeze-thaw cycles work the seed into the soil. Within one growing season, you can establish a productive clover component without killing your existing grass base. The investment is minimal, usually $20 to $40 per acre for seed depending on seeding rate, and the return in cattle performance pays for itself in the first finishing group. Another option for producers who want faster results is strip interseeding or no-till drilling red clover into permanent pastures during late summer. This timing takes advantage of fall moisture and reduced grass competition, giving clover seedlings a chance to establish before winter. By the following spring, you've got a productive mixed stand ready for your finishing program. The key is choosing the right variety. Mammoth red clover is my top recommendation for finishing pastures because it's taller, produces more biomass, 
and persists better under grazing pressure than medium red varieties. However, medium red clover establishes faster and works better if you need quick results or have challenging soil conditions. One question I get constantly is about soil fertility requirements for maintaining productive clover stands. Here's the truth. Clover is a legume, which means it fixes atmospheric nitrogen through symbiotic bacteria in root nodules, but it has higher fertility demands for phosphorus and potassium than most grasses. If your soil test shows phosphorus below 30 parts per million or potassium below 200 parts per million, your clover won't persist or produce the quality you need for effective finishing. A basic soil test costs $30 to $50 and tells you exactly what you need to apply. In most cases, an annual application of 200 to 300 pounds per acre of a balanced fertilizer like Zero 2020 maintains clover productivity and keeps your pasture system running at peak performance. Water-soluble carbohydrates and forage, those natural sugars I mentioned earlier, fluctuate throughout the day based on photosynthesis and plant respiration. During sunny afternoons, sugar levels in both grass and clover can be 30 to 50% higher than early morning levels. Smart grazers use this to their advantage by timing cattle access to finishing paddocks in mid to late afternoon, allowing animals to consume forage when energy content is at its peak. This simple timing adjustment can add an extra quarter to half pound of daily gain without changing anything else in your system. It's free performance, just from understanding plant biology and working with natural rhythms instead of against them. The bottom line is this. The clover and grass combination for natural fattening isn't just theory or something that works on university research farms. It's a proven, profitable system that ranchers are using right now to finish cattle without grain, without hormones, and without sacrificing quality or performance. The specific formula is 40 to 50% red clover, preferably mammoth variety, mixed with quality grasses, grazed rotationally during the final 60 to 90 days before market. Time it during late spring through summer when red clover hits that sweet spot of moderate protein and high sugars. Manage bloat risk with proper transition and mix stands. And watch your cattle put on genuine, high-quality finish that buyers will pay premium dollars for. If you're serious about improving your cattle operation, about producing better beef naturally, and about building a more sustainable and profitable ranching system, this information can transform your results starting this season. Don't keep this to yourself. Share this video with other ranchers and producers who need to see what's possible with strategic grazing management. Drop a comment below telling me what forage species work best in your region, or if you've tried red clover finishing and what results you've seen. And if you want to keep learning advanced cattle management strategies that actually work in the real world, hit that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We're building a community of producers who refuse to accept average results, who want to understand the science behind the practice, and who are committed to doing this the right way. Join us, subscribe today, and let's keep pushing forward together. Your cattle, your land, and your bottom line will thank you.